Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. Today's video um, is a special flight, a special video because I am going to do somewhat of a tutor tutorial for FS2 crew with the FS Labs A320. I normally don't like doing tutorials um, because I don't have any real world knowledge on many of the aircraft, or on pretty much any aircraft actually. Um, However, I've seen many people make tutorials on aircrafts that aren't real pilots or anything, or have never worked on the aircraft um, before. So, why can't I make one of these videos too? Especially if I don't find any of these anywhere on the platform. So, I decided to make a tutorial for the FS Labs A220 FS2 crew, and. Um, I will try to go in depth on some of the things, but also try to keep it not so detailed. So, at the end of the day, I do recommend knowing the aircraft itself um, first um, before actually learning this tutorial for FS2 crew. It's a bit because basically all I'm doing is not going through the systems or the aircraft itself. Pretty much going through what you're expected to do in FS2 crew. Now there are some systems or things I will most likely explain in more depth what I'm doing of the AC-20 but because uh, FS2 crew is time constraint I mean you're liter literally running on time uh, you don't have unlimited time uh, I, there's something I need to cut short and one of those things I probably should cut short is the intro so let's get right into it I will show you some settings um, that I think are key to have on so let's go ahead and go over those and that is in the config um, anything uh, set up doesn't matter it's all up to you but the miscellaneous settings I think user starts APU should be set to yes if this is set to yes this means you the pilot are responsible for starting the APU if you have this set to no what will happen is in the preliminary copy preparation the pilot monitoring will actually start the APU um, right at the beginning and in the real world that is completely unrealistic uh, you don't you, especially in here in uh, Spain, uh, which we are in right now, uh, Barcelona. Especially in Spain, uh, they're very strict on noise abatement. Um, so the APU needs to be started at around five minutes before uh, pushback, and no earlier than that. Not any earlier than that. So turning setting this setting to yes is quite important, and uh, will actually be a part of the procedure tutorial that I'll be doing. So please make sure you set that to yes. First of all, it's much more realistic. And second of all, um, it's actually much better. Anyways, you can uh, go ahead and look through all the settings that I have here. So page one, page two, and page three, and you can copy that if you want to. It's just in case there's some things that you see are different in my procedures than uh, if, as if, as if uh, in your procedures, even though you're following me the same way. Um, so you can just check that. I'm not going to go through everything, but I do want to did want to point out that very important setting. Actually, user starts the APU. Make sure that is set to yes. First of all, it's more realistic, and second of all, it is going to play a bigger role in our procedures in a couple minutes. We're currently on Batsum, which is why you see this airplane here. Um, but I don't think there's any ATC online here in Barcelona. Nope, there is not. I'm also flying on Project Fly. If you want to follow me, um, I'll see if I can put in a link. Um, below so you can follow me if you want or add me as a friend I really don't mind um, yeah so to start off I'm gonna because I have um, actually you know what to start off I'm gonna do the run pre-flight events so you go to uh, pre-flight of uh, sorry pilot flying or I think that's what it stands for and uh, then you just run and then FS crew will actually begin um, now I did disable the safety exterior inspection so normally if I don't do a tutorial I'll actually skip the 30 minutes and um, yeah so but because it's a t tutorial I want to explain some things f in the first five minutes and if I am ahead of schedule I'm gonna go and skip to 30 right away so the first thing that we're expected to do as soon as he applies power which will start at 30 minutes is we're expected to check our registration with a flight plan if we needed to we can connect the air card so I'm gonna check my weather now and 30 degrees outside air temperature would be a good time to actually have the air conditioning unit connect connected however in FS2 crew at the moment you cannot connect 
be a any external error. You can only request the external power. So we're going to have to do that manually for now. And we're going to verify our units of the flight plan. Make sure um, it is in kilograms. If I mean, if your flight plan is in kilograms, make sure the plane is also in kilograms. Otherwise, you'd you'd get some pretty interesting values. And uh, yeah, things will not look good. And we'd also make sure our flight documents are on board, meaning usually the flight plan. In the real world, it would also mean uh, MEL documentation and all that. Um, but in the sim, you don't need that. Plus, you we don't have any data for that anyways. And charts on board. That's all obvious as well. So in this tutorial, I'm going to try and show you guys the flight plan whenever I can. There's some moments where I will not be able to, such so as checking the flight plan. And also, of course, I'm going to show you guys the charts if I can as well. But I don't think that's going to happen a lot either. So let's go ahead and skip the 30 minutes and see what he does in 30 minutes. Obviously in the first 5 minutes uh, he's just doing the safety exterior inspection so you're not going to hear much of him. But as soon as you reach 30 minutes you'll hear him come in and do his flows. You just wait until the... Uh, I'm actually going to turn that off. All you have to do is wait for him to complete his side of the thing. I'm going to see if I can quickly... Okay, we'll see if that helped. I don't know. Yes, this should normally be off. We go, he turns on the batteries. Now external power. So we're going to check our registration, Echo Charlie Lima Quebec Kilo, and we're going to check our flight plan. Make sure it's the same registration, and it is Echo Charlie Lima Quebec Mike. Oh, wait. Lima, Quebec, Kilo. Wait, on the outside of the airplane, does it say Mike? Oh, it says Kilo. Alright, so that's no problem. I have to change that. That shouldn't be an issue. What does Project Fly say? Um, let me just check. Lima, Quebec, Mike. It says the right one. Okay. That's no problem though, because we do have the right uh, aircraft variant uh, checked. We have the AT-2232, which is the IAE engine variant, and we are flying the IAE engine variant. Plus, the cabin layout is the same on all FS Labs aircraft. So, it's except for eight, 19, and 20, obviously. But uh, other than that, it's pretty much the same. So we don't have to worry about that. So it's fine, no worries. But in the real world, that would be an issue, of course. But we're just going to ignore it because we're in a sim. Um, and let's go ahead and connect our air conditioning units. So we'll go here, options, external connections, and we're going to do ground AC. Fire test. Also checking our, uh, our, uh, flight plan says kilograms, and we can check here also kilograms. So that is perfectly fine as well, and checked. Next thing you want to do is check your, your charger on board. I already did that before starting the sim, so all of my charts that I think I will need for the flight, depending on uh, if anything changes during the flight, are already pre-selected and ready to go. So now we actually start with the MCDU. I actually want to, I just don't want to lose time, so we're going to work through it slowly, but also um, without too much detail. So I need to actually change some inform some something here really quick. So first things first, we're going to go to init, okay, actually FMGC, and you want to check the engine type, um, which is perfectly fine. Yeah, these are the IE engines, you want to also check the active nav database is the current nav database, 1908, unless you of course don't have a subscri subscription, then there's nothing much you can do, except I highly recommend buying one. Um, especially the charts as well. It's expensive if you d decide to buy it for a whole year, but it is worth it, if, especially if you're a huge simmer. All right, next thing, we're going to put in our flight plan uh, or our flight number. In fact, uh, normally... Um, Ground from cockpit. Go ahead. Confirm chucks in. Just putting Chuck's in the flight in. number Roger. should be enough. We'll see, 8714. Just enter that in there. And you edit request. And things should populate.
and there it is. So you can even see this update. So you can just put in the flight number and that should be just enough. So of course you want to check that everything is a, a correct. That is a correct flight plan because sometimes if you do have to revise a flight plan, um, it might even be wrong. We're going to check the flight plan itself in the flight plan page later. That's not a part of the procedure yet. In fact, I uh, might as well get the down sheet there. All of the procedures I'm doing is first of all coming from the FS2 crew uh, manual and from the actual FCOM. And the FS2 crew manual is also coming from the FCOM. So in all, of the, all of this information is not made up. It is actual procedures that the real pilots might even do, depending on the airline, of course. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to enter the cost index. Today I'm going to do 30. I'm out for the long round. Rather longer flight. And so I want to get there a bit earlier than possible. Cruise level is 320, that's checked with the flight plan view. We are viewing 8714, um, and this is our alternate. So everything on the first page of the init is checked. Next, we go to data, we go to position monitor, we go to navigate select. Now this page is for deselecting any navigates that are um, unreliable or out of service at the moment. And to know if there's anything out of service, check your flight plan, especially PFPX. If you have a subscription for PFPX, they will give you real-world notams, which are located on the bottom here. And you can see Barcelona here, and uh, DME associated with ILS Roma 25 right is under service, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. DME Papa Romeo Alpha will be uh, radar systems will be provided, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You just want to find any navigates in the real world if you are wanting to simulate real world procedures uh, just find anything that is out of service and you would enter it in there let's see if there's anything in there that we can uh, enter and now I'm not a real world pilot so I don't know if this for example would actually count as a out of service because it doesn't really say out of service directly because normally it would say out of service um, but it seems like everything is fine which is good so we don't need to deselect any navigates, which is better for us. And so we can just go to return. We'll go to MCD menu right away. The add to page, AOC menu, and we're going to enter in some information here. In it, obviously, you put in your uh, flight plan. So Euling 8714. And our estimated on-time route. Last time it was 159, now it's 202, so it changed a little bit. So estimated time is 2.02, so 2 hours and 2 minutes. You enter it in there, estimate time on route, and you init data request. It's queued and make sure it's sent. Once it is, you can clear the message, and you can request fuel at the OFB data. Make sure the fuel is appropriate for what PFPX asks you to have, which is 8,200, and make sure these are all checked. Zero fuel weight you want to check as well, 55.6 is checked, and standard time of departure is 16.50 Zulu time. It is currently 16.26, and with 24 minutes, that should make it a on-time departure of 16.50, which is awesome. I like to refuel via GSX because it's very realistic and, um, and um, real-time, and this will also play a part in the procedure that I'll be explaining later. Uh, once we do the overhead scan. So I'm going to go ahead and do via GSX, send that, and GSX will do the manual refueling, or automatic refueling in this case. And uh, yeah, it will take real time. Which, no worries, it will actually ta not take too long. Um, it will, you'll, you'll get, it will be done before uh, boarding is complete, for sure. Then we go to boarding page, you go to request. Normally if you use PFPX, um, it's best to leave these values alone because the amount of passengers are already set perfectly according to PFPX and the cargo as well. So I wouldn't change anything as long as the zero fuel weight is fine. Go to request and if you're at your origin, uh, well not origin, obviously you're, you are at your origin, but if you're at your uh, uh, base of the airline, which in this case it is, I would request catering. I'm back, no issues on the walk around. So we can do a couple flights uh, before having to come back. And then we're going to do our boarding. Um, so at about 20 minutes before departure, which is at 30, I believe, we start boarding. Uh, I just want to make sure it's right. Yes, so we're 30. So we're going to do 1630. You will start boarding. So you do that and request and then boarding will automatically start for you. Go back to AOC, 
and then that is complete. He's already done with his uh, checks, with his outside or exterior inspection, so we gotta kinda hurry up. At this time, I'd already be done with the overhead, most likely. So, we're gonna go now to the ECAM here, and let me just update my preset. And the f next thing you do is uh, hold down recall for about three seconds, make sure no other message except for NAFT gas fault displays. If that's the case, hit clear once, and you're going to check all your in-op systems, and normally they're all correct. It's about five. If it's less, obviously that's better, but it's about five in-op systems that would pop up. I mean more, including um, the additional one plus two and one plus two plus three, um, but normally five going down the list. And if they're all normal, you can hit clear again, and you'll see the message clear here, and the status page disappear with the status indication appearing there. After that is complete, you can do the overhead scan. So, cruise supply comes to auto, ground control comes to on, because the uh, voice recorder does not function until an engine is started. So in order for it to work even on the ground without an engine running, you have to turn it on manually. Do a test. And you erase it. Normally, I think in the real airplane, uh, the, if you hold it down, it will actually eventually stop with the uh, tone, and then you would actually actually talk into it, and then you'd erase that message. In this plane, it does not function that way. Hi, the security and safety check are all done. Are we good to start boarding? Yes. Thanks. Clear to board. So as you just saw at the uh, 20 minute mark, uh, she will ask to board, and you just say yes. All right, fault lines are normal. Make sure everything's set here, Captain. ADRS set to nav one two three. And make sure the on bite, on bite. Sorry, on bat light extinguishes. Strobe lights auto. Nav lights set to any system you'd like. Seatbelt signs. This is the. This is where I wanted to get into, because we are refueling still, and I think it's still going to take some time. Yeah, we're still going to be refueling. Seatbelt sign always stays off during refueling. Um, so if it, you're still refueling, keep the seatbelt signs off. Emergency exit lights, or actually no smoking can be in auto, and an emergency exit lights also armed. Make sure the landing elevation is auto. Everything here is fine. Now do a battery check, so go to e-like. Turn off both batteries. Wait just a couple seconds, maybe a minute. And uh, turn on battery one. Make sure the amperage goes below 65 and decreases to its actual amperage, and the same thing for battery 2. Once that's complete, you can deselect the ELEC page, go back to the overhead, and do the fuel pumps. Now, if you're still refueling, again, go ahead and select the passenger's amount there. If you're still refueling, which we are, keep the pumps off. This is also real world, world, real world procedure. It, uh, the engine fire test, uh, you press the test button, make sure the agent lights illuminate, the engine fire push button illuminates, then the master warning, obviously, the uh, checklist, the electric ele electronic le checklist, and then the fire indication here. And the same thing goes for engine two. That is checked. Now engine number two, same thing. That is complete. There should no indications here. All white lights are extinguished. Everything is good. Everything's fine, this is on. And then for the uh, ACP3, we're going to detune anything except for PA and make sure it's about at the 12 o'clock position. Go to the aft overhead, audio switching should be set to normal, and then make sure the maintenance indications, they're all... Jeez, that kind of scared me. <laughs> I installed new uh, boarding, or new GSX sounds, which I'm sure most of you already have. I just discovered them, so I installed them. Anyways, we want to make sure your maintenance panel no lights are eliminated. Go here to the ECAM side of things. Um, let me adjust this. You check your uh, ISIS indication, make sure everything here is fine. Any indication here is correct, make sure this is in the green. Brake pressure is in the green, make sure all the times are reset. So if, let's say you have a time here, make sure you reset it. Same thing with the chrono. You can check your date. I thought I'd, I think I'd, I thought you could, but I guess you can't in this plane. I mean, in this model of the FS Labs, make sure nose nose wheel steering is set to on, and anything that is indication is normal. There shouldn't be anything indicating. 
Next we go here into the uh, pedestal, you tune anything you need to tune. I usually set VHF1, VHF2, and in the, in the real world, interphone, and cabin. Weather radar, auto, auto, off, and off. So make sure this is on calibrate, weather and turbulence, and then 4 degrees up. This is preference if you want to have the door open or not. I like to have it on for some extra sound. Go back into down here. Go to depressurization. Obviously you want to check that your switching panel is all selected to normal. Pressurization, you check, make sure your landing elevation is set for your land uh, for your destination, which is 600 feet today for Inns, not Innsbruck, sorry, for uh, Vienna. Check your status, and again, you should see all the indications that are normal. Let's go back here. Thrust drivers should be idle. Master switch is off. Mode selector normal. Rudder trim zero. Parking brake on. And landing gear, uh, man or gravity gear extension lever down. Spoilers disarm. Flaps up. And if the flaps are here set to one, make sure this is also set to one. So it just agrees with the indication. I'm gonna go and select FMGC here. And I'm going to detune PA, because I don't want to hear the PA. So again, you do everything here as well. I'm going to select this to auto, so just in case the first officer forgets to turn it on his, himself, um, we'll still transmit in the air. And I'm going to set my squawk code, 2001. Next, you go to the MCDU, and you actually program it. So we go to init. We already entered all the information here and confirmed it. Go to init B. So you just select the next page. And we're going to put in the zero fuel weight and the block time. We're a bit behind schedule now. I'd probably be way done with the MCDU at this point. Or not way done, but almost done. So I'm going to try to hurry up a little bit. So we're going to enter in our uh, estimated zero fuel weight, uh, 55.6, and our estimated fuel of 8.2 tons. And you're just going to check that uh, the fuel is checked. You have a little bit of extra if not then something is incorrect with the with the uh, trip wind here. Or something is wrong with the flight plan, obviously, as well. The reason why I don't put the center of gravity is because this tells me that I have not confirmed these values. This means that we're still boarding or we're still trying to get the load sheet. And as soon as the load sheet is completed or gotten, we will actually update these values, including the zero fuel weight center of gravity. So I know if it's not entered here, I know that these two values here, so the zero fuel weight itself and the block time or block fuel, both are not confirmed. Alright, going to the flight plan page. I'm going to go ahead and enter my arrival now. In Europe, you normally enter the arrival immediately. ILS 11 with the Lappin 1 Whiskey arrival via Bug 3 normally. Right, I'm just going to insert it like so. I'm going to check the flight plan. So, open up the FMGC, go to plan mode. And with the charts, which I cannot really showcase because, yeah, for reasons, I'm going to check the flight plan. So, check that all the waypoints are correct and make sure the, cons the constraints are checked. So, 3000 and above is checked. Um, 3500 and below is checked. Then, Salon. And Agena. And before I continue, I'm going to go ahead and enter a radio fix information. This is all, um, if you know the Airbus, that's the, I'm not going to explain what I'm really doing. But if you know the Airbus uh, pretty well, you probably know what I'm doing here. Um, so this is a DME arc of 36. I'm going to enter 36. And again, I'm just checking the flight plan, making sure it is confirmed with my flight plan of PFPX. Make sure there are no discontinuities. As you hear, boarding has completed. We're still refueling, which is odd, um, but it's fine. And uh, let's see. Okay, your race. I'm going to enter in the uh, via insert flight plan. Go to airport and that is checked. Okay. Then you go to if you know the term diffrips, that's basically what I'm following. So I'm gonna enter in any 
thing that I want to have confirmed. And that is checked if rips. Then I go back to init, enter in the winds. So I do a wind request. If you know the winds are not populated, you mean that means that uh, Active Sky is not correctly uh, connected to the sim. So just restart Active Sky, and you should be good to go. Last time I tried to do this tutorial, Active Sky was the problem. I could not restart it and fix it, so I had to quit the sim. And I just got frustrated, so I never used the sim the same day again. I was really frustrated. That was yesterday, by the way. I tried to make a video yesterday, the same thing, but I decided to be a jerk. So yeah, now we're just waiting for the win request, but because we are a bit behind schedule, I'm going to go ahead and continue with the flows. So after diff rips, go to performance, transition altitude to 6000, noise abatement departure procedure 2, so that is 1500 and 1500. And then here's this, this, again the same um, same uh, what do you call it, strategy as with in it B page. Uh, when I enter my flaps, I do not put in my uh, my uh, trim value because I do not know it yet. Uh, I don't I don't have a load sheet or anything, so I have no idea what it's going to be. So to know that my information I'm going to enter here in, in a second is not confirmed yet, I'm going to keep this blank as well. So our assumed flex temperature today is 67. Of course we're going to update that later. Speed's 150, 150, and 150. Wind data uplink, so I'm going to go and confirm that. Now our baggage is loading. Come on. I think it's time, isn't it? After performance, there it is. All right, so I've confirmed that the winds are fine. If it's like this, it's fine. Normally, the next waypoint should have it, and that is checked. Next, after performance, the secondary flight plan. So if you need to enter a secondary flight plan, you do it as so. And as soon as you're done with that, which in this case I do not need to enter anything, I'm gonna go to init B to confirm that I still have things to enter or to update later. Next thing you do is the glitter shield. So I have flight directors on. I'm gonna set this to view all. R. Everything here constraints. This is dashed with a dot, dashed with a dot, and initial climb today is 6,000 feet, and that is entered. You can then ask the uh, flight or pilot monitoring to check the box of the FMGC. Check the box. Okay. And then uh, next procedure is to check the oxygen. So I'm going to go and do that, and you have to call the ground for that as well. Ground from cockpit. Go ahead. Oxygen test. Roger. And you check the oxygen. In the real world, in the real plane, you check the oxygen differently, but okay, it's not simulated here. Boarding is, boarding is complete. Also, refueling is complete. So we're going to go ahead and check. Uh, but before we do anything else, we're going to check. As you, as we're doing here, we're doing a scan from the left. And uh, so climb nav blue, 6,000 feet blue, QNH 1010 with the correct altitude and our speeds here are checked as well. And the same thing goes for here, so that is fine. As soon as we reach approximately here, we need to make sure that fueling is complete. And if it is, you can turn the seatbelt sign on. Fuel pumps come to auto. And we go to the ATSU page, which we still need to check some messages here. you should see a number six in front of the fuel. If that is correct, you check the value, make sure it's actually 8,200 or whatever you require for the flight, enter it in the value, and send that data over to ACARS. Once that is complete, um, you can do the departure briefing. Now normally the departure briefing is done at 10 minutes, but because I had to explain a couple things that took seven minutes or three minutes away, 
So I'm going to go ahead and enter in some information now. It's right on PM and D. Sure. Packs off. Yes. Config will be 1. Flex temperature we don't know. Speed speeds we don't know exactly either. Transition is 6000. Aha. Uh -huh. I just figured out it is a noise abatement departure procedure 1 because when I last did this I also did have to crew. So that is good. I checked that again. It's 1500 and 3010. Okay. Makes sense for Spain. And then cruise altitude, however, is 32,000 this time. And we're not doing single engine taxing. Alright, previous page, previous page. And all you need to do is say two things. Um, unless you want to say so the entire briefing yourself, which I have no idea how to do, really. Um, all you have to say is, are you ready for the departure brief? Are you ready for the departure briefing? Ready. Any questions? No questions. And you're done. That's if you want to save time, of course. So now we've reached six minutes, which is perfect because anything before that, we really didn't. We we would just have to wait. So right at six minutes, you start the APU, and I recommend starting it at six minutes, not earlier. Reason being, first of all, it's more realistic, and second of all, right as six minutes begins, right, right at seven minutes, about the pilot monitoring will check whether the position of the APU switch is set to on. If it is but not started, he will turn off the external power, which means if your APU hasn't started yet, but the switch is set up to on, and he disconnects the external power, obviously you're going to lose power. So that's why you want to make sure he's done with his checks, and he does that right as soon as six minutes begins. So go ahead at this point, at six minutes, start the APU, and uh, we can now wait. We got a company message, which probably is our load sheet, so if that is the case, that is perfect timing and it is with another message. So you go to load sheet, this is the official one, we're going to accept it, and we're going to update our values. So 55.4 is the actual 0 for weight, and 33.9 is here. And then we check our fuel, obviously, here on the on uh, what is actually entered, and it's 8.2, which is checked. So you're going to check your extra uh, time and fuel on, on board, and that's all checked. You'll see now that our trip wind is cleared. That is because we have actual wind data now uh, in more detail available to us. Alright, and that means we also need to update our performance. So first of all, we need to make sure we're both we're on uh, ATSU. We need to go to ATSU on both sides, and we're going to do a performance request. At this time though, the APU should have started, so you can turn on the APU bleed. Um, actually, before you turn on the APU bleed, I know this information is all over the place right now. Before you turn on the APU bleed, make sure your AC is disconnected. Then you can turn on the APU bleed, turn off the external power, and disconnect the GPU. Now, uh, the reason why I, I am going to disconnect the GPU myself is because I want to get to the ADSU page right away. However, you can ask the ground crew to disconnect them um, for you. Um, you can do that. So again, we'll go to MCU, add to AOC, and we're going to received load sheet. So we're going to enter in our values here. Departure is Lima, S Echo, Bravo, Lima. And we 25 right today. Packs off. Intersections, no. Temperature, you always do the temperature plus one. So our currently, current temperature is 29. So we're going to do plus one is 30. And our QNH is 1010, so you always do one less. Hey guys, all packs are on board. Are we clear to close? Yes. Thanks. See you up there. So three minutes, she'll ask to close. You just say yes, and at this time, I would close my door myself. Here. And they're going to disconnect the chocks. So just leave it, just let it happen, and that'll be fine. Okay, once that is done, I go back to the message, go to load sheet. And I'm going to enter, uh, no, no toga config is 1 plus F. Takeoff weight is 63.5. And our takeoff center of gravity is 31.8. Also, if you want to, um, go ahead and request the weather. Which obviously is important when you do the glare shield check, but I already know it's set correctly. Um, which is 1010. Um, but you can t enter in the winds if you want, which is 220 at 15 knots, which might actually be helpful to know. Send that data, and as soon as you get the message, you can update the performance. So we'll go to performance page knowing that we still got some information to enter, 
and we're going to keep this up as well. And once we get the company message, we know we've got the performance ready, and uh, we can update that information right then and there. So I'm going to go and disconnect the jetway at this time. So bye bye jetway. And yeah, now we just wait for the performance uh, to arrive for us. And as soon as the performance is completed and entered, we are ready for pushback. So we might as well call the... actually no. Um, uh, I was going to say we can do the before start checklist. However, you do need to set your performance um, before doing the before start checklist. Not because I was the crew would be like, no, something's not right, but because in the real world, um, the checklist con uh, actually includes checking the performance page, making sure it's all set. So if it, in the real world you say it's all set even though it isn't, you're obviously not following procedure. So that's why I normally wait for the performance to be completed before actually doing the checklist, even though you're supposed to be doing the checklist at about three minutes before pushing back, so this value being at three. However, because again, we're behind schedule a little bit, um, that's not going to happen. All right, there it is, performance. And we can just skip this page. And we're going to enter in our value. So down 0 0.5 is our trim. Our flex temp today is 69 degrees with a V speed of 144, 145, and 147. So now our values are entered. We go to flight plan on the second page, or on the uh, first or pilot monitoring side, and we're pretty much ready to go. So, before start checklist. Cockpit prep. Completed. Completed. Gear pins and covers. Removed. Signs. On auto. Adheres. Nav. Fuel quantity. 8,200 kilograms. Takeoff data. Set and checked. Barrel ref. 1010 zero, zero set. 1010 zero, zero set. Down to the line. Okay, so that's down to the line. I honestly don't know what it does for the before start check or before start procedure. I really don't know. You can hear something click, but I don't know what it is, uh, which is quite interesting. So as soon as you're ready for pushback, you gotta do a couple checks really quick. So we check that our brake pressure is in the green. Our park brake is set. You'll disconnect the uh, anti-skid or turn it off if the anti-skid nose or steering disengage indication is not there, which means the gear pin is in, uh, inserted. However, because it's a sim and we're running GSX, I know it's going to be connected, so we know we're going to get the message. So if you want to be a little bit realistic or pretend like, oh no, it's not going to be there, you can turn it off now. Um, but we're going to keep it on because we know GSX will cover that. Beacon comes on at this point. Make sure your thrust levers are in the idle position and make sure the chocks and everything is are removed, which happened, I believe, in three minutes. Once that is completed, you will request GSX for pushback. Tail right, no, and you do it below the line. Below the line. Windows and doors. Closed. Closed. Beacon. On. Thrust levers. Idle. Parking brake. On. Before start checklist complete. All right, and now we're ready for engine start. Now we just wait for GSX to tell us, hey, you're ready to go, or we're ready to go, and uh, wait for him to get us to push back. Good day, Captain. The uh, tug is connected now, so we'll be pushing back in just a couple of minutes. Can you please confirm that your parking brake is set? And then you ask the cam crew to arm the slides. Cam crew, arm slides and cross check. And you'll see the slides arm, which is quite important before pushback. There you can see the nose wheel steering disengage indication, which the is fine. The tug is in position, the bypass is inserted, and we are ready to push. Okay, it looks like the apron is clear. Release parking brakes. All right, release. Pushing now. Clear for engine start. All right, releasing the push. Uh, releasing the pushback. <laughs> releasing the uh, parking brake, and the slides are all armed. So we're ready for engine start. 
Uh, what I do is normally I start up all these uh, displays. And if it's the IAE engines, I normally start them uh, pretty early because they do take twice as long as the CFM engines to start. So I'm going to select to normal. Make sure the pressure is sufficient. Normally, in the, I think in the IAE engines, they have sometimes an issue with turning off the packs. So all you have to do is start the engine, and it should be fine, and it'll turn, automatically turn off. So as soon as you start, select the engine to start, you start the chrono. And as soon as you get a fuel flow in that engine, uh, you start start the chrono. And at, for the IAE engines, it's 30 seconds, and for the CFM, it should be 15 seconds. However, the CFM engine start is a little bit different. You count manually to four seconds, and then you can start the clock. All right, fuel flow. 30 seconds. That's checked, and we're going to clear it. And then we're just going to make sure the the engine creeps up and becomes available. And as soon as that happens, we can start the next engine, which should be engine number one. Normally in FS2 Crew, I forgot to mention that you actually announce starting the engines. Starting engine two. Okay, and then in a second we're going to ask to start engine number one. Pushback is complete. Set your parking brakes, please, and confirm. Okay. Available. Starting engine one. Tug is disconnected, Captain, and clear. Bypass pin has been removed. Okay, fuel flow, 30 seconds, that's checked. And we want to check for uh, N1 for 20, about 20, temperature about 400s, N2 60s, and fuel flow 400s. Left and right, disconnecting now, have a good flight. When Bye -bye. stable. And the same thing goes for engine one when it is started. Okay, there's the hang signal. Um, even though it should happen once he's there, but that's fine. Okay, engine one is available. Two should be now on the fours, six, and fours. And now you select the switch to normal. The engine start switch to normal. He'll then start his flows. You turn on off the APU bleed, the APU, and you wait for him to set his trim because he's not going to do it accurately. And then once he's done that, you can do it yourself. Um, 0 0.5 down. That's entered now. And you also, um, before I forget to mention, as soon as you turn off the APU bleed, before you turn off the APU, you can turn on anti-ice. You have to turn on anti-ice if it's required, which obviously at 29 degrees Celsius, we definitely do not need it. But that is also a procedure you're supposed to cover. Uh, you'd also turn on the nose wheel steering again if you've turned it off. Check the ECAM status. Make sure the status indication is not available. If it is, check it's normal. Normally the only thing that would be there is if you have pack 2 off, which I don't recommend with FS2 crew because I don't think it can actually uh, determine whether it's on or off um, at the moment because of the SDK. I would not recommend it, but normally um, if you do have pack 2 off, you'll see a status indication, which is obviously normal because you have it off manually. Check the ECAM door page again, make sure it's still all the slides are armed. That's not the right page, there it is, and it is checked. So now we call it for the after start checklist. After start checklist. Anti-ice. Off. Ecam status. Checked. Pitch trim. Set and checked. Rudder trim. Zero. After start checklist complete. And once that is done, you say clear to on the left side. Or clear left side. Clear right side. 
Turn on the taxi light. Parking brake coming off. And you taxi to the runway. Call for brake check. Brake check. Pressure zero. Hello. And there's Norman. Hello, it's Norman. That's the cabin secure for takeoff. Thank you. And you go back to VHF1. Checking. there. And now it's pretty much just taxiing, which might be a little bit boring, so if you guys want to skip ahead, you go ahead. I don't think I'm going to say anything important during taxi. Um, but make sure you don't skip too much, because during taxi, we, we will do some special checks. Um, so right, actually, I would not skip. I think I'm going to start the uh, taxi, uh, the official taxi flow right as soon as we cross the runway here, which is pretty much the next point right here. right here. So that's when we're going to do a flight control check. And, uh, yeah, that's quite important, of course. So, very nice. So during the uh, engine crossing, engine crossing, what I'm talking about, ta the runway crossing, strobe lights can come to on, and you can turn on the runway turnoff lights as well, just to indicate any oncoming traffic that, hey, we are here, we are crossing, be cautious. And as soon as we cross the runway and we're past the uh, holding point we can turn it back off or auto and off um, it should be fine now auto and off and we're gonna do flight control check flight control check full up full down neutral full left full right Neutral. Rudder. Full left. Full right. Neutral. You'll also see him do the flight control check, which is nice, which gives you an opportunity to actually check the flight controls outside if you want to in the, in the uh, cabin view, which is kind of cool. Um, 
except for the rudder, of course, he's not going to do that because that could uh, obviously influence your uh, ground control. And he's also going to turn on the weather radar at the time, which is why uh, you do the in the real plane, you normally do the flight control check. At least Airbus recommends doing the flight control check during taxi. Um, and because uh, uh, the FS crew has integrated in a way where after the flight control check, he's going to turn on the weather radar, you don't want to do the flight control check right at the gate. So just like in real world, I'm going to do the flight control check when I'm almost at the runway. And then after that, he can turn on all the necessary systems for departure. So we're currently close to the runway. Just make sure it's the correct runway 25 right is confirmed. And as soon as you are about to reach the runway, do the before takeoff checklist. Before takeoff checklist. Flight controls. Checked. Checked. Flight instruments. Checked. Checked. Briefing. Confirmed. Flap setting. Config 1 plus F. Config 1 plus F. V1, VR, V2, flex temp. V1, 144. VR, 145. V2 147 flex temp 69 degrees V1 136 VR 137 V2 141 toga AT set ECAM memo take off no blue down to the line so you can just see he sent in he sent the wrong values that's because I did not um, fulfill the uh, departure briefing that was on my part uh, normally so please keep this in mind that um, as soon as you update the information here, you also should update it here. I normally do that, but occasionally I forget to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And there we go. Voila. Even after you've done the, pres uh, the checklist, it is still important to do it because he, he's going to tell you to V1 and rotate and all that. And yeah. So make sure that's set correctly. Once that is done, uh, if you're cleared for takeoff, uh, or cleared to at least enter the runway, you go ahead and enter the runway, make sure this is set to Approach takeoff. Approach clear traffic. And that will, once you set the nose light to takeoff, he's going to do his flows for the uh, before takeoff procedure. Turn the runway, turn off lights Cabin crew on, be seated for takeoff. strobe lights on, and you extend the landing lights. You do not, do not turn them on yet until you're on the runway and Packs ready for off. takeoff packs are off, which he's fixed in the beta now, which is nice. And you can call for the below the line. Below the line. Take off runway. Confirmed. Confirmed. Cabin crew. Advised. TCAS. T-A-R-A. -A. Engine mode selector. Normal. Packs. Off. Before takeoff checklist complete. Ready? Affirm. So you ask him if he's ready, and if he says affirm, then you're ready to go. So you just make sure you are uh, clear for takeoff, and if you are, landing lights can come on. Chrono, get started, and you say, take off. Take off. Manflex SRS runway auto thrust blue. Checked. Thrust set. One hundred knots. Checked. Rotate. Positive climb. Gear up. Gear up.
Packs are on. any further assistance, then just ask us as we join you in the cabin shortly. Flaps zero. Speed checked. Flaps zero. Autopilot one on. Alright, so once you uh, pretty much are cleaned up, you can do the after takeoff climb checklist. After takeoff climb checklist. Landing gear. Up. Flaps. Retracted. Packs. On. Down to the line. Alright, down to the line. And once you pass transition altitude, which for us is now, make sure to set standard on all three. One, two, three. And you can call the below the line. Below the line. Checked. Arrow ref. Standard set. Standard. Set. After takeoff, climb checklist complete. Alright. So now we just wait until we reach 10,000 feet, and at that point, we're going to do a couple more checks. And I will actually go through with those for you then. And then uh, I'm pretty much going to end the video there. I'm going to explain one more thing. Uh, as soon as you do, as soon as you reach cruise, there's one last thing you need to do, and that's pretty much just say one thing, um, which I'll get to then. Of as I now it might be forgotten. Climb mode. At 10,000 feet, you can pretty confirm much confirm seatbelts off. Yep, he's going to ask to confirm seatbelts. I'm going to say yes. You can also say no. Yes. Confirm. Gonna... Clear red nav. Okay. Before we do our procedure, we're going to follow his procedure. Uh, no. Negative. Confirm copy. Active to secondary. Negative. Cruise flight level is as shown. Optimum flight level is as shown. Recommended max flight level is as shown. Are you happy with our current selected flight level? Yes. Okay. Okay, so you just... Uh, the first two sections I would say no, um, because you're going to do that yourself and it's not very reliable to do. 
um, and then on second you would just say yes. But we're going to check those pages uh, thoroughly in a second ourselves because with Evis Security you can't really trust it too much. So our procedure is simple, set this to airport, set your range as you like, you can op uh, extend the uh, table if you'd like. Go in RadNav and you clear out any manually entered VORs. Go to secondary, if you have a secondary flight plan you'd uh, delete it. And if you want to you can copy the active just in case something happens. And then you go to uh, pro uh, progress and you check your cruise level, compare with the optimum and the maximum. And if you'd want to exchange your flight, uh, your uh, yeah, your flight level, you can. And if you're happy with it, you can just stay as it is, which is what he pretty much asks for, right? So once you're done with that, you'd also check anti-ice. Of course, if you have that set on, uh, make sure if you still need it, to leave it on. If you don't, you can go and turn it off. We're also going to adjust our weather radar tilt to negative one degrees, and um, that is pretty much it. If you have terrain on. Uh, you turn it off as well. Um, he has it on because that's just an FS2 crew thing, but we don't need it. So we're going to turn it off, and that is it. So the last thing that really needs to be done is add cruise. So as soon as, you're, as soon as you reach cruise, all you have to do is give command or give control to the PM just by saying, you have control. And then make sure you confirm saying, I have control, and then you know... Uh, you're pretty much good to go. In cruise, uh, there's nothing you need to do with F as the crew. Um, if you simulate it as accurately as possible, obviously you're going to do field checks, you're going to do progress checks, time checks, all that that you need to do in the real plane. Um, but uh, if you're just going to fly and do something else, watch YouTube or watch a movie or whatever, depending on what kind of flight you're doing, or maybe even sleep. I mean, I do that for the long hauls, for example, which probably most of you do, whoever, do long, whoever does do long hauls. But either way, whatever you do, uh, at this point in the cruise, there's nothing you need to do with FST crew, really. Um, what you need to do to, uh, with FST crew then is uh, top of descent. And I'm actually going to record, so part two is going to be a very long part because I, I don't have any editing tools. I can't afford it. I'm a, a student living by myself, uh, getting bar barely getting money for anything, um, which... Uh, it brings me to my donation point. If you guys want to donate to me, which obvi obviously is not required at all. Um, currently I live in Germany doing an apprenticeship. I'm a student. I barely make a living. I, I, I make as much as I have time. Um, I pay quite a bit for rent as well. So if you guys want to support me, which shouldn't be because you feel bad for me or anything like that, just if you really like my content and want to support me, uh, there, I think there are donation links in the About Me page on the, on my page. Uh, there's, I think, either PayPal or Streamlabs, whichever you prefer. I um, mean, Streamlabs goes through PayPal as well, so it might as well go through PayPal directly. But that's up to you. Um, so yeah, but any, again, if donations do go through, if they are through Streamlabs, I highly appreciate it, and I will put you guys in a spreadsheet. Um, and I'll save every donation that you guys done, and I'll add it together. Um, but if you want to keep it private, I don't know if it's possible, but I think you can write a note saying, I want this to be private, and uh, I'll go ahead and keep it private. Um, so yeah. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you in part two, because part two is going to be long, so I'm going to probably put in times, timestamps to when you can skip where information is unimportant. Um, but yeah, we're going to start from the top percent or right before it, and uh, we're going to go all the way down until shut down. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed part one of this. I hope you guys learned some things, um, and I hope you guys, if you do uh, buy FST Crew, and you have strug or you're struggling with it, that this tutorial has helped you. If it has, let me know, and if it hasn't, let me know as well. Thanks again, and until then.